Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias here from The Automator, and over the weekend, I happened to go to autohotkey.com and noticed this big bright yellow thing at the bottom saying, wow, even though it's it's phrased a little funny here, basically we should be considering V2, It's it is the default version of AutoHotkey. Yes. And totally. if we go to that first link, if you click here, it'll take you to this page. And you can read up a little bit about what they're saying here. Um, Joe DF is the other uh, admin to the forum. So they're just saying, hey, you know what? Over time, the, the forum is going to get updated to reflect. But one big thing is that, if I remember right, the syntax highlighting is going to get adjusted to V2, right? So unfortunately for V1 users, that, that might look, you know, on the older posts, it's going to make it a little quirky. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's not going to look 100%. I, I think uh, mainly it will affect only expressions in V1. Everything else is going to look mostly the same. So like, because... you're a dick. Oh, wait, no, not that. <laughs> that's not what it is. <laughs> no, but I, I would say, you know what? The most important announcement that they made here, and this is really important for anybody who is a developer, like a really uh, real developer, is this part here that says V1 will be considered deprecated. Yeah, right. That is important because it's not simply that, oh, V2 is the main. No, no, it's right. that V1 is deprecated. You shouldn't use it. That, that That's mainly the idea. Now, and this, I talked to you about it. I took a little time and read this piece by Lexicos. Yeah, let's, let's, let's jump to it. Right. This is a very good summary as to as to the why and what should I do? And it is a very good FAQ. I highly recommend anybody considering this question a read. And they even mention whether you have to switch or not. Now, uh, he has a very strong opinion on this. And the question is, as a beginner, which version should I learn? And he's, he answers, V2. And he doesn't give any other, like, he, he's like, no. It's not V1, it's V2. There are reasons for it. And in my opinion, when I read it, the reasons not only made a lot of sense, it's basically, it made me understand why I didn't like V2 because uh, V1, sorry. I was like, when I switched to V2, I didn't want to switch. I was like, ha ah. ha. When I started using it, I was like, oh God, I hate V1. And I was like, why? I didn't really understand why. But when he goes into it, yeah. He gives objective. Uh, um, this right here. Yes, was this was this was the turning point for me. And he was explaining, "Hey, V1 has this thing. V1 has two syntaxes, and it switches between them and forces one over the other. And even though it feels like V1 is easier at the beginning, as soon as the person or the beginner tries to do some more complex stuff." They get confused a lot. And then he said, even experienced programmers have this issue because of the inconsistencies and the complexity on B1. And I was like, really? And then he gave me this example here in which just the equal sign, he's just talking about the equal sign, can mean many different things in different contexts. And you're like, oh, now I know why I hate V1. I, and I was, as, as an experienced programmer, I have, been ex I have been coding in V1 for more than 10 years, right? And he showed this one, and I didn't know that one. I was like, oh, now it makes sense why in certain situations, I was doing an if statement. Um, I usually defaulted to, hey, just use the, the parentheses. And if you're using V1, always use the parentheses in your if statements to make it consistent for you. Because if you use A equals B here is legacy syntax, but as soon as you put a not in front of it, now it's an expression. That is really mind boggling and it leads to a lot of weird stuff that you were not expecting. That's the reason why he says, you know what? Objectively, B2 is easier in the sense of you just have to learn one thing is expressions. And if you already learned that because you have been dealing with our hotkey v1 for a long time, if you already know expressions, then that's it. That's the only thing that you have to use in v1. That's uh, in v2. That's why he really says that. But looking at it explained this way, kind of like click for me. I said, like, oh, that's why I love v2 so often. Now, 
you, Joe, you say very often, hey, I, 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 I yeah, like, let, let I me, don't. Let me chime yeah, in. Go ahead. <laughs> so, and let me tell you up front, I actually recommend switching to V2 for 95% of people, right? Like, I'm I'm ready to make the switch to. Um, not for the reasons you're mentioning, right? Exactly. Um, but, and there's a hesitation also, is right now we're working on it, but having a default editor in, v, in v2 right now it's it's really you're kind of left with vs code which is can be crazy to overkill. Set up. it yeah, is overkill, overkill. for That's most people for so, most people yeah and so my perspective also like i've helped a lot of people step in to learn auto hockey and for the most part this and this is a great point this thing you're you're talking about right here all these things like Almost nobody deals with this that just starts learning auto hotkey. Like very, very few times are you going to have code that's going to, you know, take advantage, not uh, have issues with this, right? Beginners right. are doing such basic stuff that this doesn't really creep in on them. Um, that doesn't mean at some point they won't and then they'd have to switch, right? But hey, that's, if, you know, yeah. it's a, it's, I think it's a little easier to get started with it. But the reason why I'm still saying you need to switch is to your earlier point. V2, V1 is deprecated, right? And at some point, it's, you know, it's just going to be dated and there'll be more examples in V2. And why not get started with the version that's the current version? Um, yeah. And they are, you know, they're not backwards compatible. So why not if you're just starting out and whatever, you know, and, and he says also, he says two things I think are very important. One is he's clearly very biased, which is what he says, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he says, he's well, like, I'm right? not, yeah, it's his yeah. baby. He was doing this for a reason, right? Um, but the other one was, uh, well, and you and I talked about it. There's no real performance gains in V2, right? It's all no. about, to your point, simplicity of being able to code. Um, however, to me, the the coding level to get started just got bumped up a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit to get started, right? So yeah. when you're brand new, it's a little tougher. It's not insurmountable in any way. It's not, it's not even as bad as like Python, which has, you know, peculiarities too, right? It's... It's gotten harder, but you know, Here, it's the way it is. Let me let me let me rephrase what you said because now I think I understand really what you meant. Check this out. As a beginner in hard key v1, you start with simple commands, run a program, run a right. click here, do this. Right. And then when you want to do something more complex, then you deal with expressions. Right. Right? right. Now B2 starts by default in expressions, which is what you say, like, is, it has been bumped uh, a little bit. I, I never understood that concept, but now I get it. It's just that I start with expressions from the get-go, yeah. which for you, it, it is a, the second step, which is correct, because usually you don't need expressions unless you're doing complex calculations well, and complex things, right? Slightly complicated, right? But it's so, just uh, for the very beginner, they're not touching that stuff. At the right, very like, like what I'm saying, like, Little complex is having, <laughs> when yeah. I say little com, uh, little complicated is, for example, having a, a, a static name like Notepad and adding a number that changes yeah. in the after uh, after it, like Notepad one, Notepad two. That without an expression is not that simple because there's a part that is static and there's a part that moves that is variable. If you are using V1, you have to force an expression to do that. In V2, you don't have to force the expression. That's well, the default, right? That, the that's, day, that's the other part. When we were doing our instructions for ChatGPT, um, we, we both agreed like, hey, I'm going to tell ChatGPT whenever I'm doing this, force an expression instead of using it the other way, right? And because right. I, I love seeing that syntax too. So once I make the switch, I, I will. And I, I already, I'm a little jealous that I'm not, you know, that I have to do that every time, right? I will enjoy right. it. It's just... Again, yeah. it's when you're first starting out and you don't even understand what a variable is, right? That's what a lot of people don't and, even understand that. Like and this is, and that's where then it would, I would say, the people more affected will be the people who already know V1 and are switching to V2. Sure, right. If you are a total beginner and you haven't programmed oh. at all and you learned that one thing, that's it. You just that's what I'm it. saying is, it, yeah. It, if you're starting out and you're not a programmer, it makes that bar just a little higher, but it's not much, right? No, like, it's not like it, a big difference. Because he talks about, look, the code is is very similar. Even right. the, the the all the functions and everything now is a function instead of commands. And that, holy hell, that alone would confuse people. But again, how many people have we talked to that don't even know what functions are? 
right? right. Like, that's so for sure. that's my point of like, you know, hey, um, but it'll make it so much easier once they get going a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, like I said, it just raises the bar a little, but I, I don't want to, you know, there's, we've done a lot of stuff covering V1 and V2 of the, the pros think- and cons and um, but now the fa- to me it just gets back to the fact that V1 is deprecated. You know what? Bite the bullet, make the switch. And we're also neither of us are saying go back and recode all your V1 and convert it to V2, right? Which he talks about here. You can easily right. have both at no problem. Right. No. So that's the other thing. You are not forced to let go of V1. You can have them both because the V2, when you install it now, has a launcher that decides which one to run for you. So you can keep it if you want. If you don't want to switch at all, perfect. Your problem is not going to be that you cannot code in V1. Your problem is going to be when you go to the forums to find answers. At some point, there's going to be more information and more libraries in V2 than V1. But um, another thing that he touched on, changing the topic a little bit here, is error reporting. If you go to the top and look for the... Yeah, well, we did a video on that. Right, but he, what I wanted to kind of like mention is, um, no, if you, yeah, there we go. So I I liked the two um, quotes that he put here. Learning code can be frustrating endeavor because you're destined to encounter many red errors along the way. Now, here's the thing. What makes a programmer successful is in avoiding the errors. No program can avoid them. Sure, yeah. And one of the issues that V1 had, it was ignoring a lot of errors and it was avoiding them. And it didn't tell you that there was an error and you didn't know that there was an error. That's basically, Which... it, it is again, it is a, it's a raising the bar a little bit as you say, because now you're getting a lot of messages telling you, hey, you did something wrong. Hey, you did something wrong. And it's going to be frustrating well, for many people. Well, in particular, let, let's, because this is all, it's still a, a, a sticking point for me with Mm -hmm. if you reference a variable but haven't shoved anything into it yet right that will in v2 warn you hey yeah (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. and it reminds me of the example i told you earlier when i was turning like vba and i didn't realize you could turn it off but vba said you had to declare your variables and tell it the type and tell it whatever before you could do anything that really really annoyed me and i'm like oh my god what you know this is annoying but and i know from talking to you it will prevent problems later. However, right. <laughs> it's just when you're first starting out, it's annoying. It's a little bit annoying, but here's the thing. And, he, and this is the part that I really wanted to point out. The error message is not the problem, but it's a step towards a solution. Sure. That in itself made me realize it's true what you say. They're annoying. And just the fact that I have an empty variable, okay, but at, once you get it, like once you say, every time I need a variable, let me shove even even blank in it, at right. least something, you get used to doing that. That alone fixes a lot of issues later down the line. And even if you decide to switch to another language, you're going to find that in the other language, they force you to put something in the variable at the first step. So it is kind of like, it is annoying, but it's not, uh, ignoring it is not a solution actually making sure that you do the right thing is the solution. You know, that's that's the issue. Um, but I know it's going to be annoying at the beginning. After a little while, you get used to it. But if yeah. you're a total beginner, it's going to be the normal for you. That's yeah, it. And, and, and we did a video on that error reporting, though, showing how it does a better job of pointing you in the right direction, sometimes even gives you a hyperlink to click, right? Yeah. Like, it's, that is going to be very nice uh, to have. And, and, and I would say the frustration of the message box is little compared to the frustration of spending two hours trying to find a bug and then finding out that it was just because you put you put another character in the variable name the the two there are both frustrations one is a little annoyance the other one is going to take you hours of soul i would say if i have if i'm a new coder my script is probably 20 lines long it probably wouldn't take me long to figure that out if I have a much longer script, which is what anyone who's doing anything would, you know, then absolutely it really helps me track that down, right? So exactly, um, I'm just saying that you know, if you're doing beginning stuff, it isn't nearly as beneficial. So those guys are going to pay a little bit of the cost of just, you know, doing right. It. That, but, that's exactly the point. So, so again, yeah. the 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 ones who are going to take the blunt of it are the people who are switching, not right. the ones who are learning, right? right. right. Yeah. 
But anyway, so congratulations, Lexico is finally getting this to be the uh, official version. The website will be updated soon, I'm sure. And, you know, let's get going. Um, we are, by the way, working on an intro to Auto Hockey in V2, of course, uh, just to get people started. Not It's not teaching you V2. It's teaching you Auto Hockey using V2. Uh, we were going to work on a conversion one. But anyway, thanks, everyone. Have a great day. If you learned something here, like the video, really helps us out. Um, and enjoy automating. Cheers.